Okay, eighth grade. We've talked a lot about lines. We're getting really good at graphing lines, of understanding lines, understanding slope, intercepts, things like that, and uh, looking at lines in all different forms. But now what we want to do is we want to be able to compare lines and talk about um, how to change from one sort of line to another, or one sort of function or graph to another. Um, so what we're going to do is talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Hopefully these are familiar words, um, but we're going to see them uh, a little bit more and get a little refresher. So here we go. Before we get into the notes, I don't want to just give you explanations. I want you to see it for yourself. So what is it? Hopefully you'll agree with me that on these coordinate planes that these first sets of two lines, those are parallel. Now I want you to think to yourself, okay, if I can imagine about what the equations for those two lines would be, what do they have in common? What is it about these two parallel lines that is the same? What makes them um, be parallel? And hopefully you're seeing that no matter whether it's these two that are, are have negative slopes that's really sharp or these that are flatter with positive slopes, the parallel lines are increasing at the same rate. That's why they're parallel. They'll never touch because one is never gaining on the other. They have the same slope. Uh, so we'll notice that that's, that's always true. Parallel lines always have the exact same slope. Now when we get to perpendicular lines, a little something different happens. And that, that's kind of the expectation because it's not that they never touch. It's that they perpendicular means they cross at a right angle. Um, so if we look at these first, you can say, well, maybe if it's easy enough to say that parallel lines have the same slope, maybe there's something pretty easy to know or to be able to see or understand or recognize about perpendicular lines. And if you look at this first graph, you might say, well, this positively sloped uh, function seems to have a slope of 1. And I know this looks like a perpendicular, and it in fact is. I made it perpendicular. It, it meets at a right angle. Its slope is negative 1. So we know that it makes sense to us, it should hopefully, that if you're making one line that has a positive slope, then its perpendicular is going to be at a right angle, no matter how positive it is. For you, this is wrong. For you, that's right now. No matter how positive it is, the perpendicular would have to be negative. So the slopes are going to be opposite. But it's not just the opposite number, and that's why you included the second example. We can see here that it looks like, what does it look like the slope of um, the positively sloped function is? Again, and in this case, it looks like as we go from this point up into the right, it looks like it goes up 3. So it's a pretty sharp, steep slope. But what about its perpendicular? Well, it's pretty gentle. It goes, it goes 3 to the right before it goes down 1. So it's not going up 3 for every unit. It's going down 1 third. And if you think about that, hopefully something is starting to click. Because if you have perpendiculars, if one's really sharp, the other one's going to be pretty flat. And so it's not just the opposite slope, but it's the opposite reciprocal. And hopefully uh, this will be easy to rem remember um, now that you've kind of seen it and uh, you got to prove it to yourself. But either way, it's always good to take the notes uh, to make it easier to remember and to study from. So parallel lines never intersect, and they have the same slope in slope-intercept form. So it's, and they have the same slope always, but it's just what I'm going to say is that it's easier to think about slope-intercept form. Perpendicular lines, again, we're just talking about the definition of perpendicular. They n intersect at a right angle. Not that they never intersect. They intersect, you could say, like perfectly at a right angle. And they have slopes that are opposite in sign. If one's positive, the other's negative, and vice versa. And reciprocal. So it's opposite and reciprocal. You have to change the sign and numerator and denominator. Um, the last thing is that, ev or second to last thing, every line has an infinite number of parallels and perpendiculars. Hopefully that makes sense. If I draw a line, you could draw parallels at any point. Um, but again, Again, like we used to talk about, as soon as I give you a point for that given slope, it kind of locks it into place. We have a specific line. And then the last thing is that it is probably easiest to compare lines in slope and slope form. Eh, not always. Sometimes you just know where the slope is regardless. Standard form isn't as great. You should know where slope is in point slope form, so that can be useful too. But let's get after it. This first one says, find the equation of a line parallel to the given line that goes through the given point. And I didn't give you a point, but let me do it right now. How about this one? So hopefully I chose wisely. So what are we going to do first? Well, we need to know what is the slope of the given line. And it looks like the slope certainly goes through a y-intercept of 0, 3. So I'll call that 0, 3. And let's find another spot. We're going to say that it also looks like it goes through. Uh, I want something perfect that it goes through. We'll say that it goes through 1, one 5. And this is going to make it easier on us. But uh, but it looks valid. So we're 
we're fine in choosing these. So we got 0, 3, and we have 1, 5. And it says find the equation. So there's a number of different ways to do this. First thing we can just do is find the, the slope of the original line. So the slope of the original line, slope or m original, is equal to, well, as we go to the right one, it goes up two. That's kind of a way of thinking about slope. The original slope is two, then the m of the parallel line, and this is how we kind of write or symbolize parallel, would also have to be two. So parallel lines have the exact same slope. So they want us to find the equation. And so there are a couple of different things we could do. We could say, OK, we have the slope. If we can plug in a point, we can solve for the y-intercept, and we could have it in slope-intercept form. Let's do that. So it's 4, negative 2. Again, they didn't give me a scale, so I can assume that the scale is 1 on both axes. So 4, negative 2, if I could say y equals mx plus b, what's our y? It's negative 2 is equal to m, which we have is 2 times x, which we have is 4, plus b, we can solve for b. So I'll just simplify this to start. y equals 8 plus b. Negative 2 equals 8 plus b. I'll subtract 8 from both sides. When we subtract 8 from both sides, we get negative 10. So b is negative 10. Well, it's still not an equation. So some people will stop there, and that's incorrect, because they say, give us the equation. And so we know that this is y equals same slope, 2x, that's why it's parallel, but it has a different y-intercept, and that makes sense, because it's a different line. So it has the same slope, but it's going to cross at negative 10. Another thing you could have done is you could have just gone right here and said, I know it has a slope of positive 2, so let me just go down 2 as I go to the left, again, because we usually go positive as we go to the right for positive slopes. Go down 2 more, go down 2 more, go down 2 more. You kind of could have found the y-intercept this way. That would have been a unique way of doing it. Um, using the graph if you like drawing more. But the algebra works as well. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. You can see that this is why our y-intercept is negative 10. So this would be your answer right here. The equation of the parallel line is y equals 2x, same slope because they're parallel, minus 10. Different y-intercept because they're different lines. Let's look at another one. This is something else that we need to be able to do. Is we need to be able to talk about whether two equations are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So some people are going to say, oh gosh, i got to change it all around, put it in a y-intercept or slope-intercept form. i got to compare all this stuff. We just need to know the slopes. Because if I can compare the slopes, I can know if one is the same as the other or if one is opposite and reciprocal, in which case they'd be perpendicular line. So I'm going to look at these two. And I want you to look at that first one, uh, line A, and tell me what does that make you think of. And what it makes me think of is point slope form. So it would be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And that's great because if this is in point slope form, then I know the slope of a is negative 3. Now I just need to find the slope of the second line and see how does it compare to negative 3. Now this one's a little chunkier, it's a little messier, it doesn't look like anything I'm used to, so I'll just try and uh, change it around, combine some terms, and get this into slope-intercept form, because that's easy for me to see slope then. Uh, so let's just know that we're going to use the scales of justice. I'll add 4x to both sides, because I want to get, again, slope-intercept form, I'm just trying to get y by itself on the left. And we're getting close already, 6y equals... I'll put 17 on the right side, and I'm allowed to do this. This is just the commutative property of addition. It doesn't matter what order we add them in. Negative 6 plus 4x would be negative 2x. And again, the 17 was positive. Finally, we need to divide both sides by 6. And this will get us y by itself, and it will therefore be slope-intercept form. But if I'm going to divide the left whole side by 6, I need to divide the right whole side by 6. Now stay with me. Negative 2x divided by 6, I can simplify that. That would be negative one third x and um, 17 divided by 6. I can leave that as an improper fraction. That would be fine. So what do we have here? We have a slope of b. I know slope-intercept form pretty well, so I know that the slope of b is just the coefficient of x in slope-intercept form. So it would be negative one third. So does it look like they're parallel? Well, they're definitely not the same. Does it look like they're perpendicular? And the answer should be no. 
And I think a lot of people would maybe say, yeah, oh yeah, they're, they're reciprocal, but you need to know that they need to have opposite signs and be reciprocal. These have the same sign. So these are not perpendicular, so we would write a big neither. It says justify your answer. We compared both the slopes. Um, that should be good enough. But you could say not same slope. and you could say slopes aren't opposite and that would be showing that they're not perpendicular either. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's do one more together before I send you off on your own. This one just says find the perpendicular to 2y plus 4 equals 3x minus 2 that goes to the point negative 3, 2. Okay, well first I need to find, if I'm finding something that's perpendicular to this first line they gave me, this first equation, then I need to first just know, well if it's perpendicular, all I need to know it has the opposite and reciprocal slope. So let me find out what the slope is. Again, I'm just going to try and put this in slope-intercept form. So let me subtract 4 from both sides. And we get 2y is equal to 3x minus 6. And that part's not even going to be important, which is interesting. We don't really care about that y-intercept term anymore. In this case, y is equal to 3 halves x. And I could stop there because that's my slope, um, but I won't. Minus 3. What's the m? <laughs> What's the m of the original line, or the first line they're giving me? Um, and we can say that m1 is 3 halves. So the question is, what's the m of the perpendicular? And I want to show you that this is how we symbolize perpendicular. It looks like that because it's showing the right angles. So the m of the perpendicular will be opposite and reciprocal. So it has to be negative because the original is positive. And we'll flip numerator and denominator. It will be negative 2 thirds. OK, if I'm trying to find the equation of um, the line that has that, that goes through negative 3, 2 and has that slope, I will show you slope-intercept form first. Um, so let's plug in y equals mx plus b. I can plug in this point. y2 equals m. Our new m is negative 2 thirds times x, which in this case is negative 3 plus b. And that's what we're going to solve for so we can find the y-intercept. So it's going to be 2 is equal to what's negative 2 thirds times 3? Well, those cancel out. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 plus b. 2 plus what equals 2? b is going to be 0. So you could say y equals our slope m negative 2 thirds. It's opposite and reciprocal of what we were first working with. And what's our b? It's 0. So you can include that. You don't really have to. Something else you could have done is you could have just put it right into point slope form. So y minus y1. What's y1? 2 equals m the, the um, perpendicular slope is negative 2 thirds times the quantity of x minus x1. What's x1? Negative 3. So minus a negative 3 is the same as adding a positive. Or y plus 3. So this would be fine. This would be the equation of the line that meets that criteria. That would be it in point slope form. This is it in y-intercept form. Those are the two versions of the same line. Pretty interesting. Pretty good. Hopefully it made sense. Rewatch any parts that don't. And uh, I'm going to send you off with these. Ah, here we go. First one says, are the following lines parallel or perpendicular? And neither justify your answer, just like we did in that example problem. Make sure you pay attention to what would have to be true if they're parallel or perpendicular. And the second one says, find the equation of a line parallel to y equals 4x plus 9 that has a y-intercept of 8. And so think about what a y-intercept is, um, where it intercepts the y-axis. So that kind of gives you a point to work with. Or you could use it in a different way. Uh, but do your best. I'll see you later.